So Project Library is about a young man called Michael Foster who has recently realized that in the 80s he borrowed a book as a child and now as an adult he owes his local library one million pounds. Uh, look, there's no easy way of saying this, but you owe us a million pounds. No. And naturally violence and explosions ensue. Because the, uh, the owner of the library is uh, an ex-veteran, is a veteran of war and is now uh, releasing his, um, his past, bringing it back up again and going after Michael Foster uh, in the only way he knows how, in the militant sense. Now you listen to me, boy. I don't care if you got Heinz. You owe me a million dollars. It's pounds, sir. Even better. Uh, the project is available on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Tim H. And uh, some additional bonus content is available on youtube.com forward slash The Multiverse, because the project was made available due to, due to our friends over at The Multiverse, who uh, funded the project for us after a really extended writing and creating session. Mm -hmm. And then we eventually came to them, and they were the ones who gave it the green light. So. Because the audience that we have, I've only known that Project Library existed for about a few months now, yeah. but really in September, it's, yeah, like we I think it. so. Yeah, but like it's existed for about two years, like the idea of it anyway. So basically the, the, the show was created by myself and a friend of mine called Mike Cannon, who I studied with at university. And uh, he was just pitched to me, nothing else, no context, no characters, but he just told me the pitch, a man who owes the library a million pounds. And I essentially, for some reason, I thought that was brilliant. And I came back to him like about two months later and said, I want to make this into a web series. Attersham Library is set for closure within three weeks unless a new source of funding can be found. Library manager Troy Bennett, pictured here in camouflage, has declined to comment. It was like a very natural sort of smooth process of getting it made. It didn't, it was, there was nothing kind of like plotted out. It just kind of just happened. Yeah. Whenever we have like screenings here, I've been here a few times, whenever I've screened like new videos or sketches or anything like that, I've always thought it probably won't be that packed. And then it always packs out. So it's always a surprise. And I turned up late for this. To hear Project Library followed by a scream from 400 people was, you know, amazing. And, and like, again, like I said, for, for it being a two year process, it was, it was strange think... to see an audience you know, be so excited for it. I so. think as a creative, it's kind of one of those things where like on YouTube, we've always kind of been the personalities without actually wanting to be, or like kind of like aiming for that. We never wanted to be the personalities, but that's what YouTube creates. So um, people don't subscribe to a thing, they subscribe to the person behind it. Obviously I really like Tim H and Jack Howard and everyone that's in it at the moment. But um, I think I like the idea of a library being sort of like a war zone because it's such a calm and serene place. It's really different in original. Yeah. I just really like his humour. It's I, I find it's not that's, moronic that's, but it's quite smart. Movie. It's quite original and as well. There's a lot it's, of YouTubers nowadays they just copy the same thing whereas he does Yeah, the same yeah. Thing. And I like his sketches as well. Yeah. So you'd have a gun. Do I need a gun? You? No. <laughs> I need a gun. Give me a gun. No. Come on. No. Please. No. I don't need a gun. I think, I think for me personally, where I would hope the future of the film industry is going is a healthy blend between the, the advantages of YouTube and the advantages of TV and the advantages of film and traditional like Hollywood type stuff. Because they all have their distinct advantages, but what's becoming much more unanimous nowadays is that I think everything is being viewed on multiple platforms. Like people are watching feature films on their iPhones and you know, people are watching TV online, and so as a result, I think the I think the accountability for, in front of the audience is really good. I hope that becomes something that becomes more apparent in uh, bigger productions and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah, the only way I can say is I really hope it all merges. I hope we I hope we get a really healthy mix of all those of all those kind of different formats, and that we can have them all online. But I don't want cinema to die. I still want to be able to. I still want to go with my friends and buy tickets and see, experience things with audiences on the big screen. So I'm really hoping that all these different forms just come together.
I think for me personally, the future of the film industry uh, and media in general, uh, I think I agree with what Tim has been saying, like merging everything sounds um, brilliant. Because uh, I, Kevin Spacey recently did a, uh, a speech where he talked about that audiences want stories, they like good stories. Clearly the success of the Netflix model, releasing the entire season of House of Cards at once, proved one thing. The audience wants the control. They want the freedom. If they want to binge, as they've been doing on House of Cards and lots of other shows, then we should let them binge. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have stopped me on the street and said, thanks, you suck three days out of my life. <laughs> and through this new form of distribution, we have demonstrated that we have learned the lesson that the music industry didn't learn. Give people what they want, when they want it, in the form they want it in, at a reasonable price, and they'll more likely pay for it rather than steal it. Well, some will still steal it, but I think we can take a bite out of piracy. The audience has spoken. They want stories. They're dying for them. They're rooting for us to give them the right thing. And they will talk about it, binge on it, carry it with them on the bus and to the hairdresser, force it on their friends, tweet, blog, Facebook, make fan pages, silly gifs, and God knows what else about it. Engage with it with a passion and an intimacy that a blockbuster movie could only dream of. It's a bit mental. We have about 3,000 fans that we talk to every single day on Twitter. They're like our core group. Then we've got, it's been seen by like 200,000 people online. What is the best kind of advice you can give someone who wants to do this? Just do it. Like, you know, you can't, you can always say, I'm going to wait for the best director. I'm going to wait for all this money. I'm, I'm, I don't have the right equipment. I don't have this. But you can find that stuff. It is out there. And the best thing you can do is bring a story that people will fall in love with. All we have to do is give it to them. The prize fruit is right there, shinier and juicier than it's ever been before. So it will be all the more shame on each and every one of us if we don't reach out and seize it.